Welcome to Global Connections on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today, we're going to talk about what the hostages mean for Israel and what they should mean for the U.S. Our guest for the show is an Israeli, Benny Ron. Welcome to the show, Benny. Aloha, Jay. So tell us your feeling about what happened on October 7th and how you reacted and other Israelis reacted uh, after Hamas came and took all those hostages, after killing 1,000, 1,200 people. Obviously, um, everybody were in shock, in different stages of shock. Um, and uh, the rage came after that. But uh, the first day or the first hours that everybody heard about that, um, people were in shock. It's like they couldn't believe that uh, it was so easy for them to go through um, the fence that's supposed to be protecting all those uh, kibbutzim along the, uh, the Gaza Strip. And um, that all the uh, intelligence failed. And uh, those girls that are sitting by the monitors uh, crying for help and telling that the military that all those uh, Hamas terrorists are on the fence or coming in and eventually they were killing those girls and taking some of them as hostages. And the few soldiers that were there uh, fought until they all died eventually, or most of them. And uh, all that uh, after the military got a, a command to take uh, some of the battalions, the, main force and bring it, take it away from there into the West Bank by the demand of uh, Ben Gvir and Smotrich. So uh, Netanyahu, you know, is, is doing what they say and what they demand because both uh, Ben Gvir and, uh, and Smotrich, because uh, as they told him, uh, if he uh, is not going to do what they want, uh, they're going to break his coalition and he will not be able to be a prime minister. So um, on any case, um, some of the people, uh, although were surprised, took weapon and went down there to save people and to help the moment they heard about that. So, you know, it was mixed feeling. On one hand, uh, you have the shock thing. And on the other, you see that there are many Israelis that were able to gather themselves up and uh, take the car and go into hell to save people. And this is really, really important. I, I, I would like to, to stress the fact uh, that uh, it is most important thing for us, uh, for Israelis, for Jews, uh, to bring back any captives, any hostages. It's um, uh, very deep in the Jewish culture to go out and, and get. Uh, and if you if you look at the Bible, uh, there is a story uh, about Abram and Lot, how he went and chased those enemies. Abram chased those enemies that kidnapped you know, his uh, family member and was able to release them. And this was like number one issue that he had to do. Um, because according to the Jewish tradition, uh, every person is a whole world by himself. By itself. So you have to go and do that. And um, I can I can quote you, you know, from from you know from the Bible and from other sources, you know. When they're talking about, you know, ransoming captives come before feeding or clothing the poor. Um, there is no act of charity more uh, meritorious than ransoming captives. You know, uh, it takes it takes it even further. It says money collected for any worthy purpose whatsoever may be used as ransom, even if originally collected for the erection of a synagogue. And further, even if the building material have already been bought and the beams squared, 
okay, which you know makes uh, it a grave offense to sell them for any other purpose. Nevertheless, it is permitted to sell them to raise a ransom. It goes so far, okay. So, uh, in in you know, um, they say you talk about the fact that he who shuts his eyes against ransoming of captive uh, transgresses the negative, you know, precepts. So uh, um, nobody should, you know, stand on the side, like they say, you know, neither shall you stand against the blood of the neighbor. Okay. So it is like number one thing is to go and get any hostages, any captives back uh, into their home, into their families. Um, and the price, uh, there's no price for that. Everybody is supposed to leave all what they do and help to get those captives back. What about um, giving back, exchanging prisoners? Um, there were hundreds, there are hundreds of Hamas prisoners in Israeli jails, and I'm sure part of the negotiation of a hostage deal would involve the return of the Hamas prisoners at the same time in exchange. And um, But the ratio is so huge. If if there are, say, 100, 120 Israeli prisoners, how many uh, would be the, the other side of the equation, the exchange? Is it every single Hamas terrorist should be released? According to what I read you, in principle, there there is no, you know, there is no high price. So if you remember uh, during the Gilad Shalit exchange, there was one soldier, and and people argue today that a soldier is not like babies and women, you know, and elderly. They were taken from their home, from the beds, uh, into captive. And Gilad Shalit was a soldier was sitting in a tank. He was, you know, supposed to be like a fighter. Uh, and he went with the hostage, with the Hamas terrorist, uh, as far as we know, without fighting them. Okay. Um, and and so there was an ar a big argument in Israel. And, and to, to this day, you know, people say it's not exactly the same, but no matter what, at the time, and some people argue that it was because of political gain. Netanyahu exchanged Gilad Shalit for over a thousand terrorists, among them Ifya Sinwar. And many uh, argue that this was wrong. And, um, and they say that uh, this was Netanyahu's mistake. And that's uh, the mistake cost us uh, October 7th. So, on the other hand, some people said there is no price for uh, Israeli Jewish hostages, um, not only Jewish, because if they are Israelis, they can be Christians, Muslims, and even those who uh, are not Israeli citizens, but they were taken from Israel by force. Uh, Israel should have the responsibility and the good conscience on going and saving them and bringing them back to their families. It's, it's really a sensitive issue. But what we see now, um, you know, which kind of amazing, you know, uh, and I tell you, related to the fact that I, I told you about Gilad Shalit and Bibi was the one who, who dealt with that, with the, that situation and released Ifya Sinwar. Um, today, it's quite obvious that uh, the Israeli government, head by uh, Bibi Netanyahu, does not want to bring those hostages home. It's really uh, heartbreaking, and it's against all what we, all our beliefs. And it's interesting. Interestingly enough, um, those uh, the support. Uh, Netanyahu in the government, they call themselves religious, uh, religious Jews. And they go totally against what I just mentioned earlier. Uh, and this is like, because 
it's all politics, and some of them are messianic, uh, and they like Ben Gvir and Smotrich, and they say no, we need to kill the Hamas, even of all the hostages will die. They, they however, you know, imagine uh, for a moment that all those hostages were settlers, you know, from the West Bank. Um, do you really think that the government and its supporter? Um, would you know the approach to the hostages situation will be the same? Uh, you know it's it's a tricky question, but uh, at the same time imagine that Naftali Bennett was the prime minister on October seven, or uh, if you want to go wild, imagine that it would uh, be Yair Lapid, the 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 prime minister in October seven, um, and and. You know, while being there, all those thousands of Hamas terrorists, uh, you know, uh, breached the border, took over and set fire to the Gaza uh, division headquarters, took hostages, sized and destroyed kibbutzim and, and other communities, got as far as Ofakim, burned down houses um, with the people still inside, brutally murdered. Uh, like you said, uh, 1,200 people, you know, civilians, including elderly people, women, children, kidnapping. Uh, 240 people to Gaza, uh, the gates of hell would have opened on Bennett and Lapid. That's what would happen. I'll tell you that what would ha uh, have happened is that BB disciples, the settlers, and the Kahanist, you know, the Messianic, you know, like Bengvir and Smotrich and their people, would have set the country on fire. None of this so-called, what they try to say now, you know, BB and his, his factions, uh, uh, unity and all those, uh, you should be in Israel, everywhere. The government was putting everywhere, big signs, together we will win. Th this business is, uh, you know, it's just talks. Uh, none of this, we're all brothers stuff. Is, is gonna, it wouldn't happen. Uh, uh, we'd see a lynching of Arab Israelis and firing uh, uh, squads for traitors. You know, it, it is really painful, you know. Uh, it's painful to behold the, the naivete and, uh, and patriotic uh, obedience of the hostages family uh, who consented to keep quiet and play by the government's, uh, you know, um, uh, rules? They they did whatever the government asked them, and the government asked him to shut up. They don't they don't shut up anymore. So let's look at it from the other side. Why did uh, Sinwar include this in his attack? He could have just murdered them. Look, I, I told you a moment ago that Sinwar. Uh, at the same time that he was supposed uh, to thank the doctor that saved his life, because while he was in jail, they found out, he, he complained that he cannot see uh, well. So they took him to a doctor, doctor checked him, and found that in the brain of Ikhya Sinoir, there is a cancer tumor. The doctor, took him to a surgery in the Israeli hospital, took out the tumor, and Ikhya Sinwar came out alive and healthy, okay? During October 7, Sinwar's people killed family members of that doctor. Sinwar, he didn't say thank you, he didn't care. And you have to re realize that, as I said before, in the exchange for Gilad Shalit, they released Sinwar with like a thousand, you know, uh, murderers. Sinwar understood that the Israelis, for them, hostages is more than gold. And that's what exactly what he was doing. It, even people who died, even corpse, you know, Israel will fight to get them back and will be willing to pay ransom 
for dead bodies. And he knew that. And that's exactly was his aim in, uh, uh, in October 7. It was all prescribed, it was all planned to get those people in. So he has, uh, uh, you know, he will, he will cause uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, terrible uh, shock and, and feelings. And you know that for the Israelis, it's so important he doesn't care really about human lives, including his, I mean, definitely not the Palestinians when his terrorist group is putting children and behind the children and the schools, uh, hospitals, in schools, in hospitals, in mosques, he, he puts their, their rocket launchers, knowing that the Israeli Air Force is gonna you know, shoot back into those launchers and kill children and women and sick people so he can come and cry out to the world that the Israeli killing civilians. So he will get more money to his organization because everybody will think, oh, Israel is doing terrible things. But he's putting them, all these civilians, as human shield. And this goes for years. And, you know, many people in the West fall into this trap. Sinwar intended to use these hostages as as pawns, as Absolutely. assets, as resources. Absolutely. What what did he what did he expect to do? He's going to leave them in the tunnels. Uh, he was going to kill some of them, or he allowed some of them to be killed. And ultimately, what he was going to do in exchange of prisoners is that what was he looking for ransom in money? Well, no, not ransom, but but. He is looking, uh, there are a few aspects for it. You have also to realize that people like, like Sinwar has big ego. And, and um, no matter what, even if the Palestinians hate the, the, the civilian that live in Gaza and, and feel the, you know, the, the, the strength of the Hamas and how the Hamas are actually our dictator of 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 the Gaza Strip. Um, he now he will remember it as one in his at least uh, uh, in his eyes and his his followers as a martyr as somebody that caused Israel to go on its knees and and beg to get the hostages back. So now he is at the top of the mountain because Israel, in a way, lost, and and now they are begging him to release the hostages. For him, is a big deal because uh, you know he, he already his name will be remembered for generations. That that's what he has in mind. And look what happened after Israel, and it's pretty much uh, you know relevant and proof to it. Um, after uh, Hania, the leader that was uh, in Iran was killed, um, they did a vote within the heads of the, uh, the Hamas, and they voted Ihya Sinwar to replace Hania. This is, for him, is a real jump. Uh, it's like taking a soldier or an officer and making him chief of staff. He got a new position. So first of all, he got already, you know, in part what he wanted, um, and and you, it's it's important to know that for them, the destruction of Israel is the goal. They all the time say, from the river to the sea, they don't want to have two states, and they don't want to have Israel. So they have like one goal to kill all the Jews, to kill all the Israelis, and take over. And because he was in jail and he learned Hebrew, and he learned the uh, mentality of the Israelis, he's very much aware of how Israelis behave and what is important for them. And he actually used all that psychological advantages against Israel. Well, now he did, he did release some prisoners, some hostages. On what? I think two occasions he released hostages. Why did he do that? 
Why didn't he just hold them all back? Why is he holding these back? Um, what is motivating his go, no go kind of strategy on this? Uh, you know, from your questions, uh, it sounds like uh, he is the only one that played into this game. It's much more complex than that. Because what Israel did, Israel did, the government, what the government did, the government, as I told you before, they were pretty much in shock. And not only that for the first month, they actually were dysfunctional. And, and the civilians had to go in and do uh, most of the stuff. And of course, the military had to, you know, uh, start acting correctly. But the government to this day, over 300 and, and, and I think 47 days, they, they still don't function. They don't function right, incapable to this day. You have all those, you know, ministers and, and you know, member of the Knesset around Bibi, the supporters like the 64 or 63 uh, 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 delegates of uh, Bibi's uh, coalition that supports him together, there are 64, they don't function. They, they, they are incapable of, of producing something good. Every time they make mistakes or they just don't do their job. And in different levels, economy, uh, taking care of, of uh, you know, kids, education, uh, foreign affairs. I mean, wherever, wherever they do, you know, it's like, um, it's like the opposite of King Medias, if you know the story. Everything that Bibi touches, instead of gold, it becomes something else. My question is, why was this, why was this go no go? So why were it? deals hold made and and then deals not made? And at the end of the day, there are people that have been there for almost yeah. a year. And over a hundred people, including a lot of uh, hostages that have been killed, um, and I, I don't understand why why Sinra or whoever was involved in that decision making uh, has been so irregular, and what Israel could have done to make it more regular. I mean, okay. there were people there were people protesting in the streets right after October seventh. Bring the hostages back. What could have been done in all this time to bring them back? And, and what, what would the strategy have been? If you had been Bibi, if you had been in charge, what would you have done? Three words. Stop the war. Would that have brought them back? Yep. What about those thousand uh, Hamas prisoners? What about the demands that, that uh, Sinwar and I would others let them made? go. I would let them go. Wouldn't you be concerned that they will just go back and, and play out the hate and do it again? I assume that you are well aware of the latest news, and you probably uh, can estimate the capability of Israel, right? So we can get almost to anyone, anytime, if we really want to. So that's the problem with this government, Netanyahu's government. One, they don't have strategy. They don't have anything in the horizon to tell, you know, when you go to war, you need to have a strategy. It's not enough that you have tactics. You need a strategy and you need to look into diplomacy and you need to look into the horizon and say, okay, this is where we want to get. That's what we want to do in order to bring things back to normal. Baby is afraid of losing his chair. So he all the time arguing. Everybody come and said, we need to have uh, a national you know, committee to, to um, uh, investigate the October 7. He knows that it wouldn't be fun for him. So he against it. And he said, no, let's talk after the war. He makes sure the war will never end so he can stay on his seat. Because he knows what's going to happen. Now, as I st started saying, it's not one-sided. You know, Sinwar started releasing hostages, I assume, because I'm not in his, in his place, and I really don't want to go into his crazy brain, right? So uh, uh, 
So I assume that the U.S. came in. Biden, President Biden was very supportive to the day. He is very supportive. The, the U.S. government support Israel no matter what. And this U.S. suggested, let's go and sit and talk and see what we can do, any kind of concession. And the war, although started like, mm, you know, like vengeance, you know, bombarding Gaza uh, like crazy um, because it was vengeance. It wasn't smart. Maybe if, you know, Israel has enough power to go in any time, um, especially, you know, back up by those countries in the West that supply ammunition and so forth. Uh, and Israel could have just held everything and, you know, bite the bullet and say, okay, you did what you did. We want the hostages. And maybe without shooting too much, without making, you know, those, uh, uh, or going in in a huge force and destroying, uh, trying to destroy more tunnels and, and more houses and so forth, trying to come to some sort of uh, negotiation. And I think that's what happened in the beginning, that Sinwar felt like, okay, um, we can start working on something and I can gain more. But then Netanyahu with his Meshikistic, Kahanistic uh, 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 coalition, they said, no, we need to throw atomic bomb on them. You know, all this kind of crazy stuff that really ruined uh, Israel in the eyes of many, because, you know, they, they look at what some of those of crazy guys in the government saying, and they and they go and think, okay, all the Israelis are like that, which is totally not true. And of course, all those protests, I mean, I'm, I, I'm going there with 100,000 people, 250,000 people. Uh, the latest we I've been into, over 550,000 people in the streets together and you feel safe okay besides some people who, who, who being bitten by the police because they get promotion from ben uh you know but but in in general you know it's it is uh with no violent and people in the street and they all cry release the hostages help do and they and you know and there are deals one after another and Bibi makes sure all the time, you know, to put sticks in the wheels so we can move forward. Every time, like, you feel that you have a deal, it comes up with something. Suddenly, Philadelphia is the most important thing. He never talked about Philadelphia throughout the war. But in the last deal, he said, no, Philadelphia is more important than the hostages. And the military is saying, no, Philadelphia... It's not such a big deal. We can get there anytime. Okay? Look, this government, as I started in the beginning to say, they are not interested to do that. So Sinwar see that he is under pressure and they try to get to him. So he probably sit there somewhere surrounded with hostages because we see that every time military coming close to the hostages, trying to take them by force, they just shoot them. Like the six latest one that were shot to death in their heads, young people who survived over 300 days. And when uh, uh, the Hamas guards who were guarding them felt that the military is coming in, and to my knowledge, this the military, that particular unit, were not aware even that the hostages at, in, at that town. They shot them and ran away because, you know, they wanted to save themselves, but they decided to take the hostages and run with them. It will be too much. So they decided, okay, we shoot them and we go. And, and then they found out three other guys that died because uh, the Air Force bombing. Okay, when they tried to get one of the commanders of, of uh, Hamas units, they bombard his place 
it appears there were three hostages over there, and they died from the gas that is uh, coming from the bomb. So, you know, it's not one-sided. And if somebody would really, like, let's say, you know, in the U.S. already, and we saw it also in movies, when you have an hostages situation, you bring the one guy that start, not every policeman, a one guy that knows how to negotiate, right, with a, with a kidnapper, right? Movies were made on that. It's an expertise. Israel doesn't do that. If you're asking me why, because they don't want to do that. They could have done it. They don't want to do that. This government doesn't want to do it. So what's going to happen here, Benny? Um, they're still hostages. They're still being held. They're at great risk of, of dying for the lack of medical care, food, any number of things, or being killed in the tunnels. Um, what's going to happen here? This is really bloody awful. Um, uh, how, how, how is it going to play out, uh, either with Bibi's government or without? Uh, I already said that. If there would be a, a different government, there's a good chance that this mesochistic, anistic kind of thought uh, and, and, and way of, of uh, um, life and, and belief uh, will not pressure that particular prime minister. He will listen to the command, commander of the Shabak, the head of the Shabak, head of the Mossad, and the chief of staff that's saying, we don't need Philadelphia. We can stop the war for now. We can even, and, and you know what? There are not too many forces in, in the Gaza Strip now, relatively to what was before. Many of them pulled out, okay? We can wait for weeks without, you know, without continuing the fighting. And then there's a good chance the Hamas, because, the, you know, the deal is there. I mean, they have all the details of what they want, and they sit with the Egyptians, with the Kuwaiti, with whomever, you know, Americans sitting in, this, in these meetings, in those meetings. And, and the three head of the security guys coming to Bibi and saying, we can do it. Of course, Ben Gvir Smochi said, if you listen to them, you don't have a government and you don't, you're not going to be a prime minister. So Bibi saying, no, I, I, I want to continue to, to fight. And the deal falls again and again. And so I think that what Bibi wants to all of them to come in uh, body bags. Uh, that's, that's an awful result. Well, um, that's you know, what happened in actuality. That's it's happening little yeah, by little. That's what I'm it's, saying. Happening. it's happening. Sinwar and his friends recognize that these hostages are valuable property. And well, whatever deal is made, they're gonna wanna trade them for others. They they're gonna wanna retain control over Gaza. And ultimately, I think they want money or they want the promise of rebuilding Gaza uh, in the future. That's those are their terms or terms along those lines. And every day that goes by, these hostages, some of which are not alive anymore, um, become more valuable as 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 exchange, as as assets to be included in a deal like that. He's not going to give up easily. Uh, he's he's going to give them only for what he feels, what they feel um, is a good arrangement, arrangement that will let Hamas survive and continue and be in charge of Gaza and get their soldiers back from the Israeli prisons and all that. I mean, he's got a list as long as your arm. He wants that. <clears throat> and he knows if he waits long enough, whether it's with Bibi or someone else, he's going to get that. So. Would you give him everything he wants? And uh, how how would you stop him from doing it again under another government? Because, you know, as you said, they want to kill every Israeli, rim it to the sea. They want it all. They've, they've wanted it all for a long time. 
um, how do you stop him from doing precisely the same thing again? Well, in, you know, um, you describe something that actually does not exactly happening. Um, of course, we don't know all the details, but in the in the in the deal that they are working on, they are prescribed uh, a, a plan for what will happen with the Gaza Strip. And when, if Israel pull out, who will govern over there? Um, and the Saudis are very much interested to be to take part of it, including the United States and other countries that are willing to bring in their forces, you know, to keep the place in a certain, uh, you know, peaceful um, conditions and not to let the Hamas bring back his. Uh, you know, weapons and, and, and missiles and so forth. Um, so the deal is like that. I mean, as I told you earlier, when you have three people like, you know, the chief of Kuban of the Israeli military, the chief of the Mossad, the chief of the Shabak, if those three guys say, yes, we can have the deal, they know the details better than you and better than I, right? So and I I think they know what they what they're saying and I, I, I they they go there back and forth. Um, the Americans are involved, including the chief of staff of the Americans, right? Everybody like know what's happening, and none of those guys are stupid. They understand those kind of situation and how to build it or how to arrange it that the Hamas will not come back right away and take control. Okay. Uh, there are suggestions to bring in um, the PA, the Palestinian Authority, into into the game because we the worst thing that can happen is to leave a vacuum. Okay, that's what happened when, in a, in a way, when when you know um, uh, Sharon uh, wanted to take all you know the um, uh, kibbutzim around uh, Gaza, from the Gaza area, and and uh, the Israelis thought, oh, uh, we're going to have a kumbaya here, and they're going to start having farming and all that. And instead of that, eventually, um, um, the Hamas massacred the, the, the PLO over there and took over, um, and we, we got the, exactly the opposite of what we uh, hoped to get. And, um, but I think... People learn from that experience. And so in the deal, it was almost ready until Netanyahu said suddenly, Philadelphia, I need the Philadelphia route. And he does everything possible that the PA will not go into Gaza. He doesn't want to have the Palestinian Authority to go into Gaza. And which is, I mean, you cannot leave a vacuum. You cannot tell the Palestinians that they cannot control Palestinians. And Israel, actually, all of us in Israel, we are not interested in controlling the Palestinians. They should control the Palestinians and manage the, 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 um, their lives of the citizens. It's, it's not an issue that I think we need to do that. And that's why, you know, we gave them autonomy to do that. Uh, and then when you have that, you go to Ramallah, it used to be... Until until the war, at least, and maybe even now, some of the best restaurant. Uh, it was flourishing, but basically, you know, financially and so forth, uh, because you let them do their stuff. And there are many good people and smart people um, in in the West Bank, and it it shouldn't be different in the in the Gaza Strip. So it it is naive to come and say uh, that it's only. Sinwar decide what's going to happen. It's it's a combination of things that are in the deal, and the deal was, you know, ripe, was ready. The practical fact is that there has been no deal made. I accept what you're saying that um, Netanyahu is standing in the way. He and he his right wing friends are standing in the way. True. So this yeah. is, becomes a political question. And it, it has it, to be resolved politically. And in the meantime, Israel suffers 
The that, families of the hostages suffer, right. and the hostages themselves are in exquisite agony every single day. And, right. and so um, I understand all these things that are happening, and uh, what I don't understand is is why the people of Israel don't rise up politically, legally, and take him out of that job. Um, okay. If they all feel that way, isn't there some kind of legal election process where yes. they can get rid of him? Why don't they do that? Well, first of all, uh, I, I told you before, uh, we protest against dictatorship, something that, you know, Netanyahu, during the elections, okay, and I'm talking about, uh, you know, 2022, he was talking about totally different things of what he did when he got the power. He was talking about taking care of the poor and helping everybody, blah, blah, blah. He came in and then he started fighting the judicial system and uh, trying to be the dictator. I mean, he controls the media. He has uh, uh, newspapers, he has uh, a special channel uh, in the TV, you know, Channel 14, and they just spewed poison all the time, okay? Uh, they they go after people. Uh, they tell lies all the time. Um, for months and months, Netanyahu refused to give interviews in Hebrew. He just was talking to the media in the United States and lying in their face. Eventually, I think it was the Times that lately interviewed him and 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 told told him right away uh, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. For every so, as I said, you know, many times he, uh, you know how he lies uh, by the fact that he opens his mouth and and he is is very distractive to the state of Israel. And you're right. If this could to continue the country will go down so deep that it might be that we'll, we will not have a, a Zionist Jewish. We go to the streets, everybody fight for democracy, but we must use democracy to take this government down. We cannot use a queue or something, you know, a putsch, something that you can find in some countries, maybe in Africa, in South America. We we against it and we don't use violent we we don't hit anybody we don't shoot at anybody usually those things are coming from the right never from the left there are 64 uh, uh, uh members uh, that control the knesset the parliament okay 64 you have 120 and 64 are with bibi in order to have a, a, a vote that can take down Netanyahu's government, you need to have five people going out of his side, his coalition, and vote, okay, against his government. We need five people. And to us, it's amazing. Uh, I'll give you an example. Some, uh, uh, some, uh, there is one in particular. Uh, um, uh, member of the Knesset, uh, uh, Yuli Edelstein, that he used to be uh, uh, a prisoner, uh, a Zionist prisoner in Russia, in the Soviet Union. Okay, in Israel, we were fighting for him. There were a lot of protests to get him out of there. Eventually, he was able to get out of there. He joined the Likud, and now. Him, he's against releasing the hostages. And everybody's like, how come? We were fighting for you when you were a prisoner. And you change your skin, you change your, the whole thing. Lately, what happened, just, just last week, three women, two of them retired women, one of them is like in her 40s. They took pictures of the hostages. They went into a synagogue, the synagogue that Yuli Edelstein is uh, uh, praying over there in his neighborhood. And you know, when you go into a synagogue, it's open, the door are open. Anyone who wants to pray, 
just come in and pray and does, you know, okay? So there's no guards even, and it's no trans trespassing, you know, it's just, you go and pray, they, they invite you to come, okay? Um, many times, uh, um, you know, synagogue, they wish to have more people coming in, uh, and, and so the doors are open. So those women came in and placed those flyers with the pictures of the hostages on the chairs, uh, you know, the, what do you call it, the pew, whatever, you know, they put it on the chairs. So when the people come to pray, pray for the hostages. Uh, do something for the hostages. You know what happened? They were put in jail. He said that they ruined his, uh, his synagogue and they came in uh, illegally. And after all the hoo-ha and big story, and they put, they sent them to jail instead of sending them or holding them in the police station until the judge will release them. They did everything wrong legally against those three women. And eventually the judge said, it's not trespassing. It's uh, everybody can go into synagogue and they didn't do wrong. I mean, they didn't cut the chairs. They, they didn't break anything. They were just putting flyers of hostages so you can pray for them. And can you believe that Yuli Edelstein and others in the government act like that against people who wish to protest or request uh, to release the hostages? We need those five people that will vote against this government to take it down, or, um, you know, we'll wait until 2026 for the elections. I, I don't see right now anything else working, but the protests are very important that we go in the street. I tell you why, in my opinion. I think this gives the US and our allies the legitimacy to continue and support us. Because they see that the people do not agree with the government and we are fighting for peace and for two-state solution. And we need that. Israel's been losing the propaganda war from and after October 8th. Um, and That's true. I, I, I see that happening every day. It's still happening with media in the U.S. and in Europe. And um, I don't, I don't, you know, you say that Israel is very clever, and it is clever. There's a lot of clever people in Israel, but they have not succeeded in in meeting the demands of the propaganda war. And I and I really hope that they get they get they put some attention on that, um, and and turn it the other way because right now, most people in the world even excluding all the people who have geopolitical interests that don't you know that are not aligned with Israel regular people who read the paper every day they think that Israel is is wrong and um uh, and the united nations and 192 countries in the united nations most of them feel that Israel is wrong and and uh, so i don't think it's going that well hmm, in terms of um people appreciating where Israel is. You can turn the other cheek, but when you're in a propaganda war, you really have to return the propaganda. I agree with you. And this is to show you that when somebody like uh, Netanyahu collects around himself, people that um, are not professionals, um, he get, he, he, he just get people who vote for him and people who support him because he gives them, you know, uh, salaries, he gives them uh, positions and so forth, and not because they are capable people. And, and actually those ministers that he collected around him, uh, are it's a, a, it caused a disastrous situation. I mean, uh, for uh, one of the ministers to say, uh, we should put, we should throw atomic bomb on Gaza. Uh, that's the wrong propaganda, right? That's terrible, but it makes headlines. So this is what the people in the United States and elsewhere, that's what they read on the news right away. If somebody, you know, say something stupid like that, and if he has a position like a minister, uh, right away, it's going to be on the news. Uh, but they're not going to listen to somebody like me 
because I'm not a prime minister and I'm not a minister and I'm not a, a member of the Knesset, but my voice is in the street. And we are many, many, we outnumbers all those that prot protest against us and for Bibi, okay? I mean, when is the last time, even in the US, that, that you got uh, like over half a million people in the street fighting for democracy? When did you see that last time in the United States? So that's what we try to convey to say, whatever you see in our government, which is a destructive government, they lose in every, uh, um, every combat if it's gonna be eventually, uh, also the propaganda they lose and they cause damage. Uh, housing, damage. Economy, damage. Uh, the prices, the price of gas, it doubled, doubled. The, the, the food is expensive. Um, the credit companies are lowering and lowering, you know, um, uh, the level of, of credit to, to Israel. So whatever they touch, I tell you, it's like I said before, Bibi Netanyahu has the curse of being the antipod of King Medias. Whatever he touches become garbage. Well, all you can do is get those people to vote against him and make sure that he doesn't manipulate the voting system. And we in the United States, you know this, Benny, we in the United States are faced with the same issue, the same kind of right-wing um, right wing dictator person uh, who is seeking to perpetuate power, to enlarge power, and to do away with the democracy, the rule of law, the Constitution. And it actually amazes me, honestly amazes me, that there are a fair number of people in Israel who like him, who support him, who think that he can do a better job for Israel than any other American candidate, uh, which I find extraordinary. Uh, given the given the the parallel experience between Netanyahu and Trump, I don't know why you're surprised, because those people are the same people that vo voting for for Bibi, for Netanyahu. So it's it's the same group of people. So if they vote for Netanyahu and Netanyahu also, one of the things he's trying, and some people at least. Um, um, they they hypothesize that one of the things that uh, Netanyahu is trying to do is to stop the war after, that's what he wants, that uh, Trump will be the president so he can give Trump the credit. So it's going to be, you know, both of them going to say, you see, it's because I'm the president. Yeah, I'm the, that, that's president. clear. That's clear. So, so, so to show you that the people that you it, it shouldn't amaze you. Like you said, it's amazing that people in Israel uh, uh, supporting Trump. Why? It's the same people that that support uh, Bibi Netanyahu. Why are you were so surprised? I think what happens is you you know Jews in America want to support Israel. They they are very confused by everything that you talked about. They don't know really where to, you know, where where to, where to find a solution, and um, so here we are, um, and they they may vote for Trump because they think Trump is going to help Israel. What can American Jews do to help resolve this problem? It's a serious problem, and it goes way beyond the hostage issue that we started talking about. There are many American Jews that donate money to the settlers, donate money to the Kahanism, to the Meshikism, uh, uh, to, uh, we talked last time about the organization called Kohelet, okay? Uh, um, a big, uh, you know, uh, a, a, million, a Jewish millionaire, I think is from, uh, from Philadelphia. He was, Donating millions of, of, of dollars to to uh, uh, to the Kohelet organization, which is Kahanistic, Meshikistic, whatever, and um, people start having uh, uh, protest uh, in in his house, in his area, 
and he stopped. Eventually, he convinced to to stop uh, be the you know uh, donor of those guys. I mean, you have to find or people have to find those Jews that donate money to Bibi's supporters. If they are worried about what's happening with Israel, if they are worried that we're going in the wrong direction, they should not support the right wing, and they should not support the more uh, uh, settlers and uh, uh, people like Ben Gvir and, and Shmotrich. They should not support them. They should support those who fight for democracy, because money plays important role. And as you know, like you know, advertisement and all sort of actions uh, that needed when you want to be elected, or when you try to convey uh, information in the TV stations and in the radios. So basically, even in Israel, the the TV stations many times are bound uh, to how popular the program is, and 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 what they were doing in order to get more people watching the TV, right? Uh, they want to have a highest rate of uh, uh, people watching their, their news or whatever. They were making mistakes. They were bringing Bangvir to the TV and Smotrich to the feed, the wrong people, to let them talk over there instead of bringing the right people because they were looking at money all the time. So if we will have the American Jews donating to the right causes, there is a chance that things are going to change. We need the support. I am totally optimistic because there are many good people in Israel. And they're eventually, they will know how to build the Israel again. Because right now, Israel is you know hitting the bottom. And I tr truly believe that those good people that are fighting now for democracy, we have good people, good brains, good will that can fix it eventually. Thank you, Benny. Benny, run. Thank you.